My name is Alan Hawes, and this is PSOC 101. Another useful hardware peripheral inside of PSOC 4 is the serial communication block, which can be used as a UART, an I2C, or a SPI. In this lesson, I will start with PSOC 4 acting as an I2C slave and use our Windows utility called the Bridge Control Panel to play the role of master. The Bridge Control Panel is a really useful program. All the Pioneer kits actually have two PSOC devices on them. One is the target device, and one called KitProg serves the role of programmer and debugger. KitProg also has more functions than just program debug. It serves as an I2C or as a UART bridge between the target PSOC 4 and the computer via the USB connection. The bridge control panel converts the I2C or UART protocols into USB communications. This functionality makes the bridge control panel a very useful tool for debugging embedded devices. The bridge control panel was automatically installed along with your PSOC creator, so you already have it on your PC. Before we get into the I2C design, we need to make sure that you have the latest bridge firmware in the kit prog. To do that, launch PSOC Programmer and connect to the kit prog target in the port selection panel. The PSOC Programmer software will then detect if your firmware is old. Then, to make 100% sure you are up to date, switch to the Utilities tab and press the Upgrade Firmware button. It only takes a few seconds to program and verify the new image. Now we're ready to use the control panel. Quit PSOC Programmer. Let's get on with the new design now. We're going to control the brightness of an LED by updating the PWM values via I2C. We will implement the slave side, receiving data from the bridge control panel and copying it into the PWM compare register to set the duty cycle. Make a copy of the timer project from the previous lesson. Delete the timer, but keep the PWM. Open the customizer and change the PWM period to 255, which is an 8-bit number, or one byte. This will allow you to only send one byte to control the brightness of the LED. Now, look for the I2C in the component catalog. You will see that there are two implementations. One is simply called I2C, and the other is Easy I2C Slave. The Easy version implements all of the firmware needed to emulate a standard E squared PROM. Add the Easy I2C component to your schematic. Shorten the name and note that it has given you a default I2C address of hex 8. That address is fine. There's no need to change it. In the DWR file, choose the appropriate pens for the I2C. The PSOC 101 webpage shows you the right pens for your device. These pens are wired directly to the kit prog inside of the kit. Before writing the C code, you should generate the API files. In C, you need to start the component, then set up a buffer for communications. This buffer is accessed by the interrupts that occur when the I2C transmission happens. So the buffer will get updated in the background automatically for you. Define the variable and initialize the array. Then call the easy I2C set buffer one function. This function has three arguments. First, it needs to know the size of the buffer. Make sure this matches with the size of your array. Second, it needs to know how many bytes you're allowing the master to write in. In Easy I2C, we use a single buffer instead of an individual one for the transmit and the receive. To make sure the master does not accidentally overwrite private data in the buffer, we use the second argument to split the buffer into two pieces and protect the second piece from being written by the master. In this example, we have a one byte buffer and we want the master to be able to write to it. So we allow access to that one byte. Finally, you should pass in the address of the array. As I mentioned before, the buffer gets updated by interrupts in the background. So all we need to do in the main loop is update the PWM. Of course, most of the time, there will have been no change to the value 
and constantly updating the PWM is a bad idea. So add a little code to check to see if the value has changed before you update it. Once all of that is done, program your kit. Now, start the bridge control panel program. The kit prog appears in the list of connected ports. Click the kit prog in the port list to make the connection. Now you can send data by writing commands in the control panel. The syntax for these commands is fully documented in the help pages. For this example, type a W to indicate a write command, then 08, which is the I2C slave address specified in the component customizer then a zero for the offset into the buffer that you defined with your firmware. Follow that with the value for the PWM compare value in hex, and then close the command with the letter P, which represents an I2C stop condition. You send the command with the send button or by just hitting the return key. You will see that the LED changes brightness when you write different values to the I2C. If the LED does not change, check the output inside of the control panel. When you send the command, it echoes the command with plus signs indicating AX and minus signs indicating NAX. If you get a NAC, then there are several possible problems. Perhaps you didn't configure the I2C component or its pins correctly, or you didn't enable the global interrupts, or perhaps you didn't start the easy I2C component or maybe you didn't configure the buffer correctly. Go back to PSOC Creator and go through each of the steps to make sure your configuration is correct. If this doesn't work the first time and you need to go back to PSOC Creator to make a change, remember to disconnect the kit prog bridge. The kit prog can only support one connection at a time. And so if you forget that, you will not be able to program the device from PSOC Creator you will see an empty target selection dialog inside of PSOC Creator. It's not a problem though. Just jump back to the control panel and press the disconnect button. The target will then reappear inside of the PSOC Creator dialog. I'm going to really test you with the next step. I want you to control two PWMs with a single write from the control panel. You will need to add a new PWM, configure it, start it, and connect it to an LED pin. Don't forget to configure the LED pin for a hardware connection. Then you will need a bigger buffer and you will use one byte for the first PWM and the second byte for your new PWM. The command from the control panel is quite easy. Just write the offset plus the two byte values between the I2C address and the final stop. As always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore hawes at cypress.com.